How did that feel going from number one in the world, seven years in a row, yeah. to number two? Did you think you should have won? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, I still do, but how, like. How did that make you feel though? Did you, did, it, did you lose the confidence? Did you feel, still feel like you gave it your best? Or did you feel like, oh, now I'm not as good as I once was? I was hurt. Really? I was very hurt emotionally because after I won number seven, I I had a emergency hernia surgery. Eesh. And in the world of bodybuilding, that's almost like a death sentence because long recovery, but also it's an aesthetic issue because mm. you can have a scar or something like that. So where the different sport just patch you up and go back in. Yeah, you play. Bodybuilding. So, it's all aesthetic. Mm-hmm. So... I retore that incision, getting ready for 2018, three weeks out. Oh, So to have to deal with that emotionally, the physical part, I was able to deal with the pain, like the pain tolerance that I have. Right, you're a machine. Yeah. You can push I'm in my, any pain. I'm in my, yeah, exactly, I'm in my subconscious mind. I'm just like- You're not it feeling it. No. Yeah. You just push through. You just push through. But when I realized that there's a high, when I realized that I, more likely was not gonna win. As I was getting on that stage that night for the evening, for the second day, because there's two days, I said to myself, I'm not going down without a fight. And you can't fight. <laughs> right. So what what can I control? Well, during the pose down, you're gonna be as aggressive as possible. You're just gonna hit shot for shot with this guy. You're gonna call him out. I grabbed his damn wrist. And I walked him over and I said, no, you hitting this shot right now. Because right now I'm still your senior, time seven. If you want this and you're gonna probably win, but you're gonna, no, this is for me too. Because I need to see these photos later on. Wow. And I need to prove it to myself that I didn't just let you have this. Even though I was told little birds here and there from judges telling my trainer that like, yeah, it's probably not gonna happen for Phil. I still, for my pride, man, I was like, oh no, you could tell me that I'm gonna lose. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't give a damn. Like I'm going to fight. And I'm glad I did do that. Um, he probably already knew he was gonna win. So he was like, nah, I don't care. Well, yeah. I'll hit these shots, you know, whatever. But the feeling I felt, oh man, you're just standing there. Mm. The next name I read is gonna be your 2018 Mr. Olympia. And, they, and, when they said Sean, oh. and when they said Sean Roden, not Phil Heath, I've been used to hearing Phil Heath, Phil Heath, Phil Heath. Phil Heath. It hurt so bad. Oh, it, I mean, you talk about knives. It was more like someone took the sawed-off shotgun and just blew me away. Oh man! But yet I was still alive, and I could still see the hole. And I'm just like, did this just happen? And now the roar from the crowd. I was trying to digest that part. Cheering him, not you. I was trying to digest mm. that. Was that more like, what does that mean? At the time, I don't know what that means. Is it just for him, or is it the fact that they just hated me? Because I definitely developed the Tom Brady effect in my uh -huh. industry, for sure. Like, they just want to see me lose. Of course. So you got people that just want to see you lose. They don't care who it is that wins. So I knew there was a combination of all that. But then I'm like, but you have to... You, you got to acknowledge the guy. So I hugged him and told him, congratulations, you look great. Ooh. Which he did. And I told him, thank God that we can make money for our families doing this. How cool is that? Wow. How cool is it? I said, congratulations, man. And I remember what he said back. But I do remember now I'm having to deal with more roars. I, it's just ear piercing. And you're trying not to look in the crowd because I don't know if they're laughing at me. I'm thinking like all of the negative. You're embarrassed. Crap, yeah, like yeah. I'm embarrassed. I'm the second in the world at something. And I'm, <laughs> embarrassed. Embar I'm fairly embarrassed. But yeah, that's what you do when you're a winner. You do feel embarrassed. You do feel like they're laughing at you. You do feel like you're, you are you didn't complete the mission. This isn't completing the mission. The mission is to, to win, to be the greatest of all time. Uh, this was taken from me. These judges, like they, they ruined this mm. for me. I ruined, It wasn't because of my own lack of diet and training and this but I, my incisions toward like what the hell why now why that's starting to play mm. 
But as you can see, like all milliseconds, trying to digest, trying to digest. They put the second place Ooh. around my neck. To be honest, Lewis, I don't even know where that is. So I get the handshake from our league president. <laughs> Try to smile. Try to be cool, but it's like, <laughs> what's he supposed to do, man? Yeah. Like, you know, he can't show like favoritism as far as like me as a human being. Did it probably maybe hurt him too? I'm sure it did. Because he knew I I love that. Because mm -hmm. I went from basketball not having it to bodybuilding and struggling and not having money to to finally earning and traveling around the world and, and wanting to be Mr. Olympia, going through all this crap, and now you win it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again to not having that feeling. Mm. I got on one knee and I prayed. On could, the stage? On the stage. While they're awarding, I don't know what they're doing with him. I said, Phil, before you walk off, you're going to give credit to your creator because you know what? This is the defining moment of you as a human being, not as you being a champion anymore. This is about you. You can't be a hypocrite. You got on your knee and you pointed up in that sky. You prayed. You thank God and all this other stuff. But this is where it matters the most. This is such a character building moment for yourself. This is not for show. This is not for everybody else. But you will, you made winning habitual. Well, you're going to make these things. These are habitual things too. This can't just matter when you win. And I thought about my future self, what that would look like. So as I walked off, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I remember having that check. I was like, this is BS. Mm -hmm. Take, I took all the medals off. I remember one of the expediters like stuff like guy. I was like, I quit. I was like, F this. He was like, <laughs> it's just so bad for me to bad sportsmanship, but I was just pissed. <laughs> I'm like, F this, I'm done, you know, like because now I gotta go get surgery again. Oh, I'm just like, man. I don't know if I can go through that. Like, this is just too much. The internet was getting to me, like, you know, it was just a lot, man. Because I was knocking on the door of Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman, and that got taken from me. So I don't know, like, if I could. And if it was really worth it. So I go backstage and, you know, I'm friends with Tim Grover. You know Tim. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that book, Winning. Yeah. Talk about winning. Phil, you're a winner, but not tonight. It's sleeping with him. Mm -hmm. And all that applause, all those people that were cheering you on or even booing, you didn't care. You loved it. There was someone else right now. You're walking off stage into something unknown. You've been second at the Olympia before, but it was different because you now lost a title. Mm -hmm. Before you got second, the year before you won, it's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. How do you process this? So I'm like scatterbrained and I'm diet, I'm depleted. I'm you right, know, trying yeah. to figure this stuff out. You got no sugar you. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> what do I do? I'm like, okay. Subconscious mind, where's my bag? Drink some <laughs> fluids. Yes. Put your clothes on and get the hell out of here. You know, it's interesting with winning. It's like when you're winning, all the pats on the back, mm -hmm. even the people that hate you kiss your ass. <laughs> they do. Yeah. They do. When you lose, you get to see some reality. Mm. They're with him now. Right. There was no one backstage, there was no interview. There was no one there. They claimed that they were. But I was like, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to sit here and wait while you guys, get, and that's part of winning. Yeah, you're supposed to wait until he's until done we're something. we're done with him, and then we'll and talk then they'll to him. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm out of here. Wow. So going to that hotel room, long, long walk, man. I wanted to walk home. I wanted to walk home, get to the hotel room, you know, you have bottles of champagne, you know, you got the a, a big old sheet cake. <laughs> Do I eat this? No. Oh, Instagram. Mm. This was what, 20... 2018? Give credit where credit is due. Go on Instagram mm. and congratulate them. Now I got to deal with that. And, and oh, and do I punk out and leave the comments off? 
Because there's going to be some people that are going to let you, mm-hmm. they're going to get some, they're going to clap back at you. Oh, yeah, you deserve to lose. F you, this and that. I was getting all that. You know, even before, you know, I was winning. You're going to get that times 10 now because you literally said that you were going to win. And, you know, they're going to be like, oh, he's arrogant. He's this, he's that. Let me, let me, you know, them those devils come out, man. Wow. Because they saw vulnerability. So I realized I was so emotionally raw that I, I had to trick myself into just staying in gratitude. So hard sometimes. Imagine all those years you're being invited to the best nightclubs. I would party at XS and Encore Hotel. They'd shut down the lights when I walk in and play. The champ is here. All right. Oh, they do all that cool stuff. I didn't have no after party that year. Ooh. I didn't want it though. Right. Because I was at the point in time in my career where I wanted more intimate moments with people who really mattered. Right. And I knew that a lot of my even close friends and relatives were taking advantage of that of that hospitality. Sure. So I just wanted like, it's funny though, because when you're winning, you have all those, the entourage and stuff. I literally had 90 people on a guest list going to that nightclub and stuff. You know how much that costs? So much. So much. Imagine how many people poured me a cocktail. Pat me on the back. That's how it works though. That's the other side of winning though. Yeah. You know, you deal with those hanger-ons and stuff like that, but when you're losing, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have any text messages. So for me, it was always like, how disciplined can I be? Because I know in life, that's the only way. And I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna sin, I'm gonna make mistakes. But how expensive is this choice I'm about to make? Right. Because you're gonna pay. Man. 